Christ. It's not all rosy and good. Yeah, it's, it's not. See, it's. I mean, yes. e either either the Muslims you know are the devout Muslims who will who mm. will kill you for mm -hmm. for leaving Islam, or you're around Muslims who 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 aren't going to follow that. But a anywhere, pretty much anywhere you go, mm -hmm. there's going to be persecution. You're going mm -hmm. to face persecution if you if you leave Islam. All right. Not going We're going to gonna have a call and then we go back to the references again about yeah. apostasy. Uh, Manu, good evening. You are uh, live. Hello, go ahead. Manu, Hi. you there? Hey, buddy. Uh, what? Go ahead. Yes, hi, how are you? How are you doing? Um, I wanted to make a comment in terms of um, overall. Um, it's so hard. Uh, the problem I see sometimes, and the, and the conclusions you draw about uh, the, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, is that it's so hard sometimes to really know the, a man or a person. Um, even like even drawing from examples from current like events, like let's say if somebody wanted to really know President Bush. Or President Obama, they would normally would go to sources and books and and their advisors and so forth. And even after they're gone from the office, they would there would be all always, you know, two camps. One camp would say, well, this person was really good, and the, well, another per, depending sometimes on their political views. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that it's so hard to understand a man like Mohammed just based on people's commentary and then applying situations that happen and not knowing the context of why some of the war campaigns happened, why some of the rulings were given, and then trying to draw conclusions. That, that complicates things, um, and, and it would not complicate that toward Prophet Muhammad, but it would toward anybody or any leader. And um, one thing, though, about using examples of a prophet having miracles or not having uh, miracles, and that would prove that they're, they're very good or they were, they were truthful. The problem with that is that Quran itself says that uh, Moses performed many great mir miracles, and Pharaoh still rejected them. Jesus himself performed many, many miracles, raised the dead. And people still, they were in disbelief that maybe it's a rumor, or maybe you know there's some explanation, or maybe he's a liar. So, what I'm thankful about about Islam is that there's a perpetual, uh, from my, and I know you probably might even laugh, but for, for my perspective, there's a perpetual miracle which is Quran, and the the only problem with Quran is that it needs time, in order for 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 the message to get absorbed and understood in a person, the person has to study it and study it systematically and, and study it for many years. I've studied the Koran for probably over 20 years. And the, my level of understanding in the past five or 10 years is greatly different as my understanding the first few years that I started studying. So when I when I look at Nagin's uh, testimony, I truly see somebody that's really passionate about finding you know their place in the universe and their their um, view of God and who God is and their relationship with God. And um, my comment is that you know there's nothing wrong with people being like that, and there there's nothing wrong in Islam people wanting to understand what God uh, who God is. The only thing is that in Islam, it really clearly defines the ultimate sin. The ultimate sin in Islam is, and has always been from the beginning, God says, when mankind tries to imagine who God is, how God is, is there an image for him, is there something that represents him, or does he have any partners or representation? And Islam clearly defines that from the beginning that God says that he is unimaginable by human mind, and there is nothing in his creation that could represent him. The problem I see with Christianity, to some degree, is that Christianity says that the person of Jesus was fully man, his flesh man, and he was, his spirit was God, and he was perfectly God. From the, from the Christian point of view, that is fine. But from, from the Islamic point of view, the whole thing in terms of, again, God having a representation, that just does not flow with Islam's view. 
you, and it, it raises other questions. If Jesus himself was fully God in the Spirit, why did he not Mano. refer to himself as God, Mano. but he always says, I'm getting my instructions from somebody Mano. else, just like a man? Mano, uh, we have a lot of calls uh, waiting, so please get to the point so we can uh, give uh, David the uh, opportunity to answer or co to comment. Uh, are you done, or you have still another comment? Uh, yeah, I, I'd like yeah. I'd like to ask something, and, and then I'll and I'll respond to some of Manu's points. Uh, by the way, Manu, we're, we're, uh, for the second program tonight, we're specifically going to be addressing the deity of Christ. Uh, so, if you'd like to talk about uh, Jesus uh, being divine, that'd be a great show to call into. Uh, but I'd like to ask uh, if what what's your best what's your what would be your best response to the question why should Nagin leave Christianity and become a Muslim, or why should anyone leave Christianity or atheism or anything and become a Muslim, what would be, in, in, don't have too much time here, but what would be your, your best uh, brief response? Yes, it, my best thing is that I would say exactly the same thing that Jesus said, that everybody, uh, and I'm paraphrasing it, you know, uh, horribly probably, that they have to seek God and for, you know, don't let family, friends, or society would get in your way to find who that true God is and search that God out and your eternal relationship in heaven is at stake. So that is my that's, that's the only yeah. reason I can think of to be in Islam is that to realize that the big prize is in being in heaven and God would be pleased with a person that did not ascribe any partners to him. Uh, Manu. Are you still on the phone? Yes, yes I am. Uh, so you have no problem if somebody decided to leave Islam and to be a Christian or to be a Buddhist or to be a Hindu, you have no problem with that? The only problem I have is that yes. if they choose to do that, it's mm -hmm. their choice, just as many Muslims, many Muslims in the state of Islam could mm -hmm. end up having problems with God because they according to God's standards. I'm talking to you personally. I'm talking to you. So they were in the same boat. I'm talking to you personally. Do you have a problem with that personally? Do I have a problem with them personally? No, it's their life. All right. It's okay. Their life. Okay. Go ahead, David. All right. Uh, Manu said a lot of things. I'll, I'll try to give some brief response. Um, uh, thank you, Manu. Concerning, uh, he said it's hard to understand Muhammad because we don't know all of the details. Well, I'm not rejecting Muhammad as a prophet because of what I don't know. I'm rejecting Muhammad as a prophet because of what I do know. Uh, I'm not rejecting Muhammad because of these issues I'm not sure about. I'm rejecting Muhammad based on the clear evidence that has come down to us. Now, Manu has said uh, there's a perpetual uh, miracle in Islam. It's, it's uh, the, the, the Quran, but it requires years of study. The problem, Manu, is the more I study the Quran and the more I study Islam, the more evidence I see against it. Uh, in other words, I, I'll tell you this. Before I started studying Islam uh, in detail, uh, there, there was a time before I was even a Christian. I started studying Islam before I started studying Christianity, but I didn't go that in depth. Eventually, when I started going more in depth in Islam, uh, that's when I started noticing all the massive problems. Before that time, I thought of Islam as, as really kind of, even after I converted to Christianity, I put Islam kind of second, you know? Like, if I weren't a Christian, I'd be a Muslim. Islam is really 